You're watching NRA TV with Bill Whittle. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Los Angeles, California Live. I'm Bill Whittle sitting in for Hot Mike, who's had a minor catastrophe today. Uh, turns out it was his birthday party on Santa Monica Pier, and he had a bunch of friends invited over. He laid out this tremendous sushi spread. He had to go back to the car to pick up some arugula, and by the time he came back, somebody had taken all of it and used it for bait. He's heartbroken. Um, I don't think we'll probably see him until Monday, to be honest with you. He's, he's really quite upset. <sighs> Today... We would like to talk about the difference between conservatives and Republicans, and this is a subject that could take, uh, I don't know, we could do hours and hours and hours and days and days and days on this. But what do I mean by conservatives versus Republicans? Well, I know, like almost all of you, certainly virtually all of you, uh, we've watched the last eight or nine years with this sense of dread and, um, and, and growing concern because of the essentially the 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 um the commandeering of the american health care system everybody knows the the democrats admitted it they admit it behind closed doors we have them on on kind of hidden video admitting that the purpose of obamacare when it was rammed through the um the congress in uh, 2009 the purpose of it was to be a front step into single-payer health care single-payer health care is uh, national health service and so on and uh, the situation in great britain uh, with uh, with Charlie Guest is uh, uh, Char Charlie Gard rather is is an indication that we don't want to go to a place where the government gets to decide what kind of treatment you get if you get treatment and even if you can take your children out of the hospital so they can either get treatment from a third party or or go home to die peacefully we don't want our lives in the hands of a bureaucracy and this is why uh, the Obamacare repeal is not just. It's not just a piece of an agenda that has to be accomplished. It's the agenda. It's the entire philosophy of the agenda. Does the government own the people or do the people own the government? Which one is it? And if it turns out that the government controls your health care, then they have literally got their finger on the button over your life and death. And this is why we fight. This is why the Tea Party movement came out of, out of essentially out of nowhere. People who had never been involved in politics in any way, shape, or form whatsoever suddenly find themselves going to rallies and they're driving across country and they're setting up signs because they understood that Obamacare was in fact the foot in the doorway to this national health care service that the progressives always want. And by the way, the reason that the progressives want a national health service is exactly the same reason that we don't want a national health service. They love the idea of having the government and bureaucrats in charge of everybody else's life, and they love the fear that it inspires when everybody's dependent on them. Because when everybody's dependent on the government, you vote for more government. And guess who that, guess who's going to be the winner in that, in that uh, outcome? So... Well, that's basically the stage. Many other issues, but let's just let's just concentrate on that one. What happens? Well, Obamacare is pushed through the through the House and the Senate using all of these, you know, they're just conjuring tricks. Things like something was not voted on, but it was deemed to have passed, and so on. So, without a single Republican vote. With their Democratic majority of the House and the Senate and the presidency in the first two years of Obama's term, they rammed this thing down the throat of the American people. Many people on the progressive side of the of the aisle, whether it say it publicly or privately, they said that Obamacare, they knew that Obamacare was going to essentially destroy private insurance, and it basically has. And when private insurance wasn't functioning anymore and the system collapsed, they'd say, see, what have we got? We've got nothing else we can do except go to national health service kind of health care, like in Canada or Britain. So since 2009, the American people realized what was going on. Large numbers of them rose up in an actual grassroots effort called the Tea Party, whose primary focus was to repeal this intrusion into our lives. The fact that the government can make you buy something that you may not want to buy or you can't afford, it's disgusting and disgraceful. And over the last seven years, we've watched premiums get higher and higher and higher and the choices get smaller and smaller and smaller 
obviously Democrats care more about cars than they do for people because my car, if my car wants to buy insurance, my car has 200 choices. My car gets to decide whether it's going to be um, uh, what level plan it wants, it's going to de determine how much coverage, going to determine all of that stuff. I have two choices, three choices. The Obamacare exchanges are going out of business and things are basically collapsing all around. We all know this. So, what's the difference between Republicans and conservatives? Conservatives understand the principle about Obamacare repeal. They understand that this is not just legislation. This is a theory of how to run our lives. And we see what happens when the state runs people's lives. And we used to know what happened when we ran our own lives. This is not a joke and it's not a little item to be checked off the list. It's the entire reason that we're here. So. Looking back at the history, they rammed this through in 2009. Uh, what's his name? Uh, I can never remember this guy's name. Um, the the Ragin Cajun, oh, good Lord. You know, ah, I've almost got him. You know, the, the, the uh, Carville, James Carville. The night Obama's elected, James Carville says, this is the beginning of 40 years of uninterrupted democratic control. Turns out, if, turns out he was only off by 38 years. So the next election after Barack Obama is elected and after Obamacare, the next cycle, 2010, huge numbers of people came out and flipped the House. Huge, huge win for Republicans. Now, the Democrats don't own all three houses, uh, including the presidency. They don't own the House, they don't own the Senate, and they don't own the presidency. They own the Senate and the presidency, but you need all three. That was 2010. So that was our ability to basically stop them from doing more unilateral damage. Now, obviously, if you're going to repeal this monstrosity, you need the House and you need the Senate at least. So in 2014, we give the Republicans the Senate. Now they have the ability to send repeal legislation to the president. And they do. And he vetoes it. And they sent a repeal bill something like 30 or 40 times during the time since 2010, some insane number of times that Republicans voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And it couldn't be passed. That repeal could not pass because Barack Obama continued to veto the bill. And everybody knows it. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows it. The Democrats knew it. We knew it. The Republicans knew it. Everybody knew that if we're going to get rid of this Affordable Care Act monstrosity, we need all three. We need the House of Representatives, we need the Senate, and we need the presidency. So guess what, America? Last year, we gave the Republicans all three. We gave them what the Democrats had in 2008. You've got the House of Representatives, you've got the Senate, and you've got uh, the presidency. You've got a, a slim majority in the Senate, but you've got enough. So what happens? Well, all of the, not all, many of the Republicans who, re, who constantly voted for repeal, it turns out many of these people suddenly don't vote for repeal anymore. And the reason they don't vote for repeal anymore is because now it could actually happen. It could actually happen. So they just basically chickened out because they don't want to face the consequences of it. So now we talk about the difference between Republicans and conservatives. Because this is it. A Republican, apparently, is, can occasionally be a conservative, but not necessarily. A Republican is a politician, and a politician acts on a set of morals and, um, and standards that are quite unique among the population. Politicians treat re-election the same way that you and I would treat being stuck in the Hanoi or in Saigon watching the last helicopter on the roof. When you watch politicians go through the backflicks they need to go through in order to be re-elected, they look like they're struggling to get onto the last helicopter out of Saigon. I mean, they, they will do anything. It's, it's life or death for them to maintain their office. I don't understand this, and, and, and I know that you don't understand it either. We can't understand why people have to have these jobs. Well, the reason they have to have these jobs is because it's power and it's authority that they usually did not have in the, in the real world, Donald Trump being a major exception to that. Barack Obama, prior to getting into politics, was, was a, a, he was a street lawyer. He was handing out forms in Chicago. 
Now he's president of the United States of America. And you can take that exact same kind of motivation and apply it to virtually everybody who gets into politics in this country. And so what the practical result of this is, is twofold. First of all, it means that the Democrats get the best liberal minds because, I should say progressives, progressives and leftists believe in the state. So the smartest progressives and the leftists go into government because that's where they perceive all the power to be. I personally think they go into government because they can't succeed in business, but that may be a prejudice that I hold. Conservatives, on the other hand, feel that politics is something that should just get out of the way. The job of the government is pave the roads, build us a navy, protect us from those the British, build us an army to stop those warlike Canadians from coming back down again, and basically leave us alone. So our best minds go into business, and they go into military, and they go into these other fields. So we're at a disadvantage there. But ultimately, I've come to realize that when you really get down to brass tacks, what you find is, is that the, the huge majority of people who go into politics do it for this personal aggrandizement. They don't understand anything about conservative philosophy, or if they do, they're certainly not married to it, certainly not married to it above their, above their job. I could list, what, four maybe? Four people? There may be more, but I can count four that I think really understand these principles and are willing to fight for them. That would be Ted Cruz, uh, Trey Gowdy, uh, 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 Jason Chavitz, and probably uh, Louis Gomer. Um, those four, those four at least, I have watched with my own eyes on television, standing up for American principles, and and against corruption. So I know those four guys get it, but the huge majority of them don't. They don't understand it. They don't understand it, and they don't care to understand it. So what the end result of all of this goat rodeo is pretty much this. You have one party, which is called the Democratic Party, which believes in big government. Big government, more government, more control, more spending, everything else. Opposing them, you have the Republican Party, which believes in slightly less big government. We want to spend slightly less than the Democrats, and we want just a little bit fewer regulations than the Democrats. And, and while the Democrats may want to take us $20 trillion into debt, the Republicans only want to take us, oh, I don't know, $16 trillion into debt. See the difference? See the incredible difference between these two parties that we've got here? This is the difference between Republicans and Democrats. But what we really deal with in this country is the dis difference between progressives and conservatives. So why aren't there any Republican conservatives? Well, for the reasons I just said, the best minds in, in, in conservative minds go into business or, or other fields. And one of the one of the most interesting stories of all is the story of the great conservative icon, Ronald Reagan, who started out as a Democrat, was a liberal, big liberal, Hollywood actor, Hollywood celebrity, who, who, who figured it out, much as I did. I was a lot more liberal when I was younger. Most people are. But Ronald Reagan figured it out. He wasn't born this way. Didn't he? he was born with the, with the moral core, and he was born with the sense of honor and integrity. But, but the politics, he didn't know anything about that. He was in, he's, in, he's a leading man in Hollywood. All he knows is communism. So he starts to inform on the communists, which means the left hates him, hates him, hates him. But Ronald Reagan became Ronald Reagan. He became the Ronald Reagan we know when he did this tour for General Electric. General Electric sent him around the country, I think in a bus, and he would just speak to people on behalf of General Electric. Hey, we've got this famous face, Ronald Reagan. He's a nice looking guy. General Electric pays him to go around. And for a couple of years, Ronald Reagan went out and, and spoke to people one to one. And he learned what they were dealing with. He listened to them. He learned their problems. He got the common sense from the American people. And since he had so much time, he would sit there and he would start to write out this philosophy. He learned how to become Ronald Reagan. And that's why Ronald Reagan was such a great Republican and a conservative. He understood these things before he got elected. And since he was a movie star, he didn't need to be elected. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk some more about this difference between conservatives and Republicans, and we'll talk about um, a whole bunch of different issues that are on the table right now that make a lot of sense when you look at them this way. Uh, I'm Bill Whittle. This is the Hot Mike Show on NRA TV.